one of the reasons, for example, I wasn't taking medication throughout all of this whole experience because I knew from the inside I wasn't having a mental illness or a mental experience. If I get to know somebody who was in a mental hospital, already stigma is in operation, I might not even be able to listen to such a person. And even further, that the family of a person being locked up in a mental institution, the whole family can be stigmatized. So that's how strong that can be. And uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a sad thing. Me being locked up in a psychiatric hospital allowed me to get a much deeper understanding of how powerful stigma was. And then, of course, that had me asking the question, but what is really motivating this mental stigma? I wasn't going voluntarily. I was being given no choice. The ambulance arrives into what Waterford Regional. They, they, when you're being sectioned, you're brought into a back door, into the lock-up area, you see? This doctor says to Mary Karen and Jeannie, look, he won't take medication, and look how agitated he is. He was completely calm, like completely calm. He was sitting on the bed and he wasn't saying anything. He wasn't behaving erratically or anything like that. The doctor just ignored her, totally. And then they said, you're not going to take it, we're going to, we're going to have to impose it on you and they injected me into my back with one of the most powerful anti-psychotic drugs. I discovered it was holyperidol. Such administration is really medically a last resort uh, and to be assaulted in the way that Eddie was constitutes a very grave assault on his person. I had already decided I was going to break free of it, which on the Monday I did. I wasn't discharged, I freed myself from it. People falsely believe that people who have mental illness are more violent and more dangerous than people who don't have mental illness. Because there's a mistaken relationship, there's a tremendous fear which may be unnecessary.